Appendix 9, the textual analysis of ancillary texts, Digipax. This fulfills assessment objectives 2 and 4. Rolling Stone's Sweet Summer Sun. The main cover image of this Digipack is very visual and connotes the feature of the products, a live performance DVD. The main cover image is an artist impression of a shot from their performance in Hyde Park. With this, the band logo can be seen, indicating that this product is part of their brand. The colours that are used are bright and vibrant, such as the yellows, the blues and the greens, etc. This helps the image achieve its desired connotation. The text on the front cover is just the title of the digipack and the name of the artist. This minimal use of text focuses the audience attention towards the cover image, allowing that to fulfil its purpose. The text itself is written in a simple sans serif bold text and is in the colour white. This helps it stand out against the colour of the background image. The text Hyde Park Live is written in red and has the appearance of handwriting. This sets it aside from the main title making it stand out separately. The text is positioned in the top left hand corner of the front cover, making it easy for audiences to see in areas like stores. This also makes sure that the main image isn't obstructed, keeping it in the focal point of the front cover. Unlike the front cover, the back of the digipack mainly consists of dark colours such as black, dark and red. This juxtaposes to the bright colours used on the front. The main image on the back cover is a long establishing shot of the actual concert. Like the image on the front, this could have been used to emphasise the fact that this is a product, is a digibat, with a DVD of their concert. The band's logo is also seen on this side of the cover, repeating the idea that this is the part of the Rolling Stones brand. The text on the back of the digipack is just a simple sans serif font, making it appear modern and simple. The text is also written in the colour white, making it clearly stand out against the black background of the main image. The collection of text on this back cover is also positioned so that it isn't covering the main focal point of the background image, the stage and the crowd. This digipack also fulfills the conventions of digipack as it has all of the must-have features on it. These features are a barcode, the record label, the disc formats and regions, copyright information, a track list, a main cover image, a title and a web address. Falls Holy Fire Deluxe Edition. The front cover is taken up entirely by the main cover image and the title. The main image could possibly have been used to link to the name of the band, Falls, as horses are featured. The colours of the image are dark with the use of blues and greens. These dark colours could possibly have been used as a genre code, as the dark and mysterious feel connotes the indie rock music that is on the album. The band have chosen not to use an image of themselves on the front cover. This is commonly done by bands of the indie alternative rock genre and so fulfills the convention of this music genre. The band may have chosen not to do this as they wanted to enhance the reputation of their music, make it relevant to the music or to focus it more on the music rather than themselves. The only text on the front cover is the title of the album and the name of the band. This makes it clear to the audience who the artist is and the name of their album. The text is in a simple sans serif font and is in a bright yellow colour. This makes it look not only modern and simple but makes it stand out against the dark colours of the main cover image. This also makes the cover very minimal which again meets the typical conventions of covers for the indie alternative rock music genre. The title text is positioned on the top left hand corner of the cover keeping it from covering the audience of view of the main image. Also with it being in this position, it is clearly visible for the audience to see in stores. The image on the rear of the digipack is a continuant from the image on the front cover, making it appear clean and consistent. The text on the back cover and the spine of the digipack is the same as that used on the front cover, a simple and sans serif font. This again allows the appearance to look consistent and clean. All of the text on the back and the spine is in white making it stand out against dark colours of the background image. The largest part of text on the back cover is the track list for the CD and the DVD. This makes it the focal point of the back cover, highlighting the product's contents as opposed to anything else. This digipack has on it all of the features that a digipack should have on it. These are the title, the main cover image, the record label, the barcode, the format of the disc, 
copyright information, the track list, a spine, the artist's web address and the DVD region. These features allow the cover to fulfil its purpose. Beatles for sale. The main cover image of this digipack is of all four members of the band and takes up the whole space. The band members are all seen through a medium close-up shot and they are all looking directly at the camera. This is an example of breaking the fourth wall by Bertolt Brecht. By doing this, the band directly addresses the audience and gives them the sense that this is a personal connection. The positioning and colours of the front cover are used effectively to help sell the product and attract the audience. The band themselves are positioned in the middle of the cover, making them the main subject of this digipack colour, as well as making it clear to the audience it is a Beatles digipack. This is teamed with the choice of colours that are used. The band are dressed in black and dark colours, which set against the light colours of the foreground and the background makes them stand out on the cover. Each of the band members aren't wearing any particular facial expression, which creates a sense of mysteriousness for the audience. This is also a best of digipack, so it is probably unnecessary for the band to wear any form of influential facial expressions to help sell their product. On the cover, there are no indication or codes of the music genre on the front. Examples of these could be guitars, microphones or any other musical instruments, but they haven't been used in this case. Again, this could be due to it being a best of digipack, and so it may be unnecessary to use any features like these. On this cover, there is very little text used. The text that is used is the title of the digipack, Beatles for Sale, and one of the formats of the disc, Stereo. These pieces of text are also very small, meaning that the image is the pro predominant way of selling this product. The band's name is shown on the spine, but again is very small, suggesting that this isn't one of the main ways of selling this digipack. The spine itself is all black, just opposing with the light colours on the front cover. The Beatles logo is also used on it to help the audience identify it as a Beatles product. The back cover is mainly filled with black and dark colours, which juxtaposes it with the light colours used on the front cover. Like on the front cover, a medium close-up shot of the whole band is used again, with them all wearing the same facial expressions and clothing, and also looking directly at the camera. This creates the same effect for the audience as the image on the front. Again, no genre codes are used in this image to indicate what music genre this is. The font used for the text on the back is a simple sans serif font, making the cover look clean, modern and professional. It is also in white, allowing it to stand out against the black background, making it easy for the audience to read. The largest part of the text on the cover is the title of the digipack, making it apparent to the audience the name of this product. This digipack fulfills the conventions of a digipack colour as it has the title of the product, a main image, the record label, a barcode, the disc formats, copyright information, the track list and the spine. However, there isn't a web address due to the internet not being available at the time of release of this product or a DVD region as it is an enhanced CD digipack and not a DVD. Alt-J and Awesome Wave Deluxe Edition the front cover is entirely one image with a small section of text. The main image gives the illusion of a stream of colour with the use of bright colours such as pink, bloat and purple. In this image there are no genre codes but the use of colours could suggest that the music is vibrant and exciting. The text that does appear on the front cover is the title, the logo, the star ratings and the prize nomination. This is positioned in the top left hand corner of the cover. This means that it isn't obstructing the main cover image, allowing it to fulfil its purpose of attracting the audience. The awards and star ratings allow the audience to gain opinions on the product, again persuading them to buy it. The back cover of this digipack is very minimal. There is no image and is entirely covered in text. The text is a bold, simple, sans serif font, which allows it to look clean and simple. There are no bright colours used on this side of the cover and is all grey and white. This ju juxtaposes the bright vibrant colours used on the front, making it the standout side of the digipack. The track list takes up the majority of the back cover, making this the most important and visual part of the back. 
that this digipack again fulfills the conventions of digipacks by having all of the must-have features on it, allowing it to fulfill its purpose as a digipack. Brian Adams, The Best of Me. The front cover doesn't visually have much on it, but its features still successfully help it to persuade the audience to buy it. The main image on the cover is a close-up shot of the artist's face, which has been split so we can only see above the top of his nose. This allows the audience to identify the digipack as one of Brian Adams' products. The image on the cover is also in black and white, and matches the background colour. The background colour, black, doesn't make the cover visually exciting or eye-catching, but the use of the red swirl pattern on the top half of the cover helps it to be noticed. The bright red contrasts well against the dark black, making it stand out to the audience. Also, with this red pattern being at the top of the cover, it makes it easily visible to audience in stores, as it would be the most visible part of the digipack on, on shelves. There is little text on the front cover, and that that is visible is the title, the artist's name, and a brief inf bit of information on the digipack contents. The font for this is a simple sans serif font in white, making it look modern, as well as standing out against the dark colours of the background. There are no genre codes on the cover, so unaware audiences wouldn't necessarily know what genre of music features in this digipack. However, the dark colours suggest a rock mature kind of music is what is being sold. On the back of this digipack, the same colours and the same red pattern is used again. This makes the whole cover appear consistent and professional. It also con connects the idea that the music genre is of a rock mature kind. The text, like on the front cover, is a simple sans serif font in white. This again makes the digipack look modern and consistent. The white text stands out easily against the dark background. The largest block of text is the features and the track list of the CD and DVD. This makes it the focal point of the rear cover, therefore attracting the audience. This digipack fulfills its conventions, as it has all of the must-have features that a digipack should. These include a barcode, the title, a main image, a track list, a web, web address, copyright information, disc formats and regions, and the record label.